a story to tell. I would like you to visualize a typical classroom. It doesn't matter if it's elementary school, middle school, high school, or even college. It's just your typical classroom. You see the white or light colored walls. How about the whiteboard in the front, back, or even both? Think about the desks, how light they are, the floor, how light it is. And then there's those drop ceilings that are white with bright fluorescent lights. Is that kind of like the classroom you were visualizing? It's one in my school, one in my department. Well, for 88 to 90 percent of us, that classroom is just fine. We can walk in, we can take a class, we're, we're okay. But for 10 to 12 percent of the population, going into a classroom that looks like that, with all that bright, shiny light, and trying to read white pages with black print, can be a form of torture. About five and a half years ago, I was finishing up my graduate degree, and I do love to say that. Um, and Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute hired me to design and teach a four-day orientation program for GED and adult high school students. Well, as any good teacher, I hit the storage room hard. I was trying to find things that would make my class more interesting, maybe brighten up the room a little bit. And I literally tripped over this box. So I, I looked at it. It had this weird word on it, Erwin. I had no idea what that was, but I tend to be a very, very curious person, nosy. So I opened the box, looked inside it, and there were these weird questionnaires asking stuff I'd never heard of or thought of asking before. There were also a bunch of clear plastic sheets of different colors. I thought, huh, that's interesting. I wonder what this is all about. So I started talking to people in my department. The best answer I got was, well, somebody a few years ago used to test students for something with those. But then when she moved away, nothing's been done. Huh. So I went home and immediately put the word Erlen into my search engine because I really am a curious person. And what I found changed not only my life, but the lives of many of my students who were to come. In the 1980s, Helen Erlen was decided to do a research project. She worked with a group of remedial reading students in California in a, in a college much like mine, and she gathered this team together. Uh, there were educational psychologists, optometrists, all sorts of people trying to figure out why these poor college students had had problems reading their whole lives. Because they were very, very frustrated, these poor people. They wanted to be able to read as well as anybody else. Well, they tried various things and they still couldn't figure out what was going on. And then they decided to write a questionnaire. And one of the questions made such a huge difference. The question was, what do you see when you read? And the students started drawing pictures of what they saw when they read. And this all led to something called scotopic sensitivity syndrome. This is a visual perception disorder that affects 10 to 12% of the population. But when you look into remedial reading programs, that percentage jumps up to 35%. When you be, go into a GED program like mine, with high school dropouts, the percentage can go 50% or even higher. This is big. Most people haven't heard about it. Well, in the 1980s, um, Helen and her group started playing around with this, and they found the characteristics of people with scotopic sensitivity syndrome. Some of the physical characteristics these students experienced were things like headaches every time they read. Sometimes they were just little headaches, but sometimes they were so severe the students would be nauseous. How would, how would you feel if every time you did something you got a really bad headache? Would you want to do it, or would you kind of get turned off to it? I personally wouldn't. I get enough headaches. The students just stopped reading they didn't want the headaches. Some other 
characteristics, many with scotopic sensitivity syndrome find their eyes dry out when they eat. Um, it feels like sand in their eyes. Some of them actually, their eyes start tearing up and they turn bright red. Um, some students get nauseous. Some readers actually um, find themselves getting sleepy. They'll just say, oh, I just fall asleep every time I read. <laughs> Others try to find the darkest space they can find in a classroom or anywhere. I kind of noticed after a while in my department, there were a couple of instructors who always had their lights off in their office. Every time I walked by, the light was off. And I thought they just weren't there. And then I found out they were there. They just hated the light. I did find out later, by the way, that they had scotopic sensitivity syndrome. They just didn't know it. They do now. Um, so what happens on the page? And this is, this is where it gets really interesting. For most of us, 88 to 90%, this is what a page looks like. This is one of my grad school papers, so don't even try to read it. But we're okay with reading it. But if you have scotopic sensitivity syndrome, after a short time, the words might start to blur. Now, I've asked many of my students who have this symptom, well, what happened in school when you told your teacher that the words always blur out on a page when you're reading? They said, oh, they sent me to the eye doctor. What happened when the eye doctor said your eyes were all right? Well, that's where it gets tricky. <laughs> Either they were put in remedial reading situations or just kind of shoved to the side. <clears throat> Another thing people see are rivers. Now this was actually made by my son. I asked him what his what happens to him when he reads. And the natural breaks between words or sentences, the white starts to glare out, forming these rivers that go down a page. After a while, the bright shines so strongly that all you see are the rivers and not the words themselves. Some students whole page just starts glaring up. Can you imagine trying to read this? Can you imagine if you don't know that what you're seeing is different from what everybody else is seeing? This would give me a headache. Some students, the page actually gets darker, a lot darker, and they can't actually make out the words themselves because it just gets too dark. And for other students, the words on the page start to swirl around in circles or move in different ways. Some students' eyes skip from one line to the next one up or down, up or down. They can't actually read a whole line. In fact, they have to use their fingers to follow along the line or get another sheet of paper to put underneath it. You really want me to change this slide, don't you? <laughs> Can you imagine if you saw this every time you read? You're welcome. <laughs> well, I got all of this information and took it to the head of my department. She was very interested, very open. So she contacted the Erwin Institute and scheduled a class, a, a certification class for a group of us. And she invited people from other colleges, from other schools, to come in and learn about this and become certified and help students. It was a very intense two days. But I have to tell you, the weird thing is, at the end of it, it wasn't that I didn't believe in scotopic sensitivity syndrome. I wasn't 100% sure about the way they treated it. I hadn't had enough experience. But the last part of the certification process was actually going home and testing people. Well, I'm not an idiot. I started with my family. I mean, I kind of own them. They have to do what I say. So, yeah, I started with them. But the person I was most interested in was my son. He is a brilliant guy. And I know, you know, all mothers think their kids are brilliant, but he really is a brilliant guy. But his whole life, he hated reading. It was a battle to get him to read in school. It was a battle to get him to read in college. It was always a battle for this brilliant young man. And we had taken him to an educational psychologist who gave us this wonderful answer. Well, his verbal IQ is way higher than his visual or written IQ. What does that even mean? <laughs> so 
So I wanted to see if maybe this, this phone topic sensitivity syndrome had something to do with him. Well, we started out with a bright light and this testing book, white pages with a bunch of black X's making shapes. And really right off the bat, he, he started having problems that the X's were moving on the page, the boxes that were moving on the page, the page was blaring, he's starting to get a headache. But then we got to this one page and he just kept putting his hands over just covering it up. And I said, babe, um, I need you to stare at this. It's part of the test. And he said, mom, this whole page is going around in circles. If, if I don't stop staring at it, I'm going to throw up. Oh my goodness. Here is this 26-year-old who had never heard of spell topic sensitivity syndrome. And he was describing one of its harshest characteristics. Wow. Well, the next step was to use these clear plastic things that I found in the box but got a brand new set when I was certified and just play with them. Try different colors on top of that white sheet of paper with the black print. Uh, we tried blue, made it too dark, purple, we tried all different color combinations. Some made it a little better, some made it worse. And then I put two peach colored overlays on top of that page, and everything stayed still. It didn't go around in circles anymore, there was no glare, nothing happened. And this young man who hated reading for his whole life became one of the most, most voracious readers I have ever met in my life. I mean, this guy, he'll tell us, he does read two or three books a week. He'll tell us about this anthropology book and how awesome it was. I mean, I hardly know the guy. He's got a huge library now, all because of two peach-colored overlays. Isn't that amazing? So how does this work? How do we help someone with scotopic sensitivity syndrome? Well, first, contact the Erlen Institute at erlen.com. See if there's someone who is certified in the area to help. They can find out if whoever you're concerned about does have scotopic sensitivity syndrome and play with these overlays. Because with the right overlay for each particular person, this can become this. Or this can become this person can read just like anyone else. Isn't that amazing? Well, some other things you can do because there might not be someone who's certified to help in the area. Um, I actually had a student who came up with this idea before she was my student. She loved helping her kids with their schoolwork, but she'd always had reading issues herself. And she found whenever her daughter put a report inside a gray plastic report cover, she could read just fine. Any other color, and it was not going to happen. But gray, and she could check her daughter's work. So she started reading everything under gray plastic report covers. So you can try going to an office supply store, take a white sheet of paper with black print, and just shove it under every single color report cover you can find. This isn't 100% because there were a whole bunch of different combinations of them. But you might find that one of them actually works. So, some other suggestions? Turn out the lights. They don't all have to be on when we're reading. Our classrooms are so bright. I have a friend who has scotopic sensitivity syndrome. She's also a teacher. And she turns half the lights out in her classroom. And everybody's happy. It doesn't keep the 88 to 90 percent of students from reading. But it sure does help the rest. <laughs> Um, you can try printing things on colored paper. Sometimes that helps, but it has to be the right colored paper. But you can also talk to people. Talk to teachers. Talk to remedial reading specialists. Talk to principals. Talk to superintendents. Can you imagine what would happen if we started testing students in third grade? If we found this before they became my GED students, if we helped them fall in love with reading. Now, there are detractors. There are people who do not believe in this. 
they, they believe in scotopic sensitivity syndrome, but they're not really sold on these overlays or on the tinted lenses that are available. But I have to tell you, there have been hundreds and hundreds of tests since the 1980s. In fact, the first group of students in the 1980s are still using their tinted lenses. Some of the scientists say this is a placebo effect, but that's been decades. I don't think placebos work that long. <laughs> but I've also seen brain scans of people with scotopic sensitivity syndrome without their clear plastic overlays and with them. And those brain scans show a difference. This is real. I just want to tell you one last story. My daughter has this incredible friend, and she was visiting last fall. We were all going to the Renaissance Fair, dressed for a Renaissance Fair. And uh, we hit the traffic, so we were all talking. And I asked her how things were going. She was not really happy with the direction her life had taken. Um, she finished college, but really wasn't that happy with her job. And I said, well, have you considered going back to school? And she said, Karen, school was hell for me the whole way through school. She'd been to reading specialists. She'd been to all sorts of people. But she was never able to read like anyone else. In fact, she had readers. Horrible. So school, she felt small. She felt insignificant. She felt stupid. I didn't have my reading kit with me. I was in the car. It was at the college, locked in for the weekend. So I suggested she go to an office supply store. She called my daughter in tears a couple of days later because as soon as she put the clear plastic overlay underneath the purple report cover, the whole page made sense. She's now a reader also. Isn't that incredible? Can you imagine if we could change people's lives? This young woman is going back to school, by the way. She's going to pursue her master's degree. I'm so proud of her. But she feels so much better about herself. So let's make a difference. Let's spread the word. Let's make more readers. Let's change lives. You can contact, you can check out the Erlen.com or just do a word search on Photopic Sensitivity. Thank you very much.